on horn knobs on these guys and I want to show you how I do it. Um, you know, it takes a little bit more time and I'll show you why if you want to come closer Isaac. I already did one on my off animal and you can see this is a horn knob that we're working with. This is the style that I really like. I found them from Walt Lassie in Western Connecticut. Tapered and threaded on the inside. It's a little smaller profile, closed on the top. And instead of just sticking them on and screwing them on, um, what I do is I file the end of the horn, which I'll show you, I cut it. And that way it blends nice and even with the horn so it doesn't look out, out of place. The other thing by doing it this way is it's less likely to get caught and pulled off um, or damaged. So we're gonna show you how we do that. These guys are huffing and puffing a little bit. I do it while they're in the yoke. You can see that we just work them quite a bit. Um, so they're nice and tired and docile. So we'll show you that in a second, how to put those on. Okay, the tools to do it, pretty straightforward. Um, you use a hacksaw, cause I'm gonna cut off a little bit of the tip of the horn. And then this seems like overkill, but I use a hoof rasp. Um, to start the filing process and the reason that i do is because the edges are also a, a file and you'll see why that's important and then i use the um the uh, less aggressive side of the file once i get it going i have a smaller one and this one just doesn't have the file on the side but it's just easier to use with the smaller one once you get it going and then this is how i was taught it seems a little silly but we use Crisco to lubricate the threads, and I'll show you that. So when we start cutting the threads on the horn, and just a wrench, so I'm using an uh, adjustable wrench, um, or you can use a wrench that fits the knob. And then I am uh, fastening them with a two-part epoxy. So I'm just using JB Weld on this particular one, but any epoxy will work. You don't necessarily need to put epoxy on them. And some of them will have a hole on the end of the, uh, on the, end of the horn knob or on the inside of it, so you could actually put a brad through, but these don't have it, so we're just gonna epoxy them on. All right, so the first thing is we wanna make sure that we cut it so that it blends correctly, and what I mean by that is the circumference of the bottom of the knob, we want to blend into the horn. So we're gonna take a little bit of the tip of that horn off, and I'm gonna match it up to see where it would blend with the circumference of the horn so that it matches the bottom of the circumference of that knob. And you can see I have quite a bit sticking up. So I'm gonna to have to cut right about here so that I get it in deep enough into the horn. Now, obviously the animals have to be old enough to where the end of the horn is dead. These are Devons, so they got nice long horns. So it makes it a little bit easier, but we're gonna start that process by cutting that end off. And that's where I wanna go. So I'm gonna start with a hacksaw and just cut the end of this off. This is where they may give you a little bit of a problem, but as long as they're nice and tired, you may have to put a halter on them. All right, so you can see that we cut the tip off so that we have our so that we can blend our horn knob into that so it's the right circumference so the next thing that we're going to do is start filing around the edge and taper that so that we have a nice blended end all right for the length of the thread I've determined this is where I want to start filing right here so this is why this rasp is handy I'm gonna take and just kind of make a groove all the way around. Not gonna look pretty right now, there we go. And try to make it all the way around the circumference. Whoa. Okay, so it's not very pretty, but I have a little bit of an edge here all the way around, and that's where the end of the horn knob is going to or the bottom of the horn knob is going to end. So now what I'm going to do is file a taper into this all the way around. So we'll do that next. Oh. 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 So now I'm using the smaller file, just once I have it started, it's just easier to use the small file. And I'm gonna take down the circumference until it's the right size for the threads. And there's gonna naturally be some variation in the horn so you'll actually be correcting that as we go Whoa. and making it a little rounder okay so 
this is old habits die hard. So Ray Ludwig showed me how to do this and we would always use Crisco on everything. So we're gonna put a little Crisco on the end of the horn. I'm sure you could use anything else as a, as a lubricant, but this is basically just to start cutting the threads. And then what we do is we're probably not quite there yet, but we're gonna take and we're going to start threading this on just to start to cut the threads so that I can get down to that shoulder that I made with the file. And then that way it's nice and even. Okay, so you obviously don't wanna to go too hard because then you could start damaging the horn, but we'll go a little bit, we'll take it off and you can start seeing the threads being cut. And that's actually not too bad. You can see that it'll we have a little more filing to do because as this goes on, the threads get narrower. So we wanna make sure that the bottom of that knob is as flush with the horn as, as we can get it. And we're just gonna repeat. So every time we file it a little bit, we're gonna to try to cut more threads. So we'll just go ahead and do this. And start again. And I think we're almost there. So we keep filing it a little by little. You'll see where the, the threads are made. You actually have to file down the threads up towards the tip of the horn for it to seat further down. And again, we're just gonna be careful that we don't over overdo it. Okay, so we've got the threads cut and you can see where we have it is when it's more or less even with the taper of the horn. So now we don't have this knob sticking out that can get caught. It's nice and even and that takes some time but it looks really nice. So now the last step on this one, I could probably leave it threaded without epoxy but just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna take this off. And then because we had the lubricant on it to cut the threads, we're gonna make sure that's perfectly clean. And then we'll mix a little epoxy, put just a little bit on, you don't need very much, and we'll tighten it down and be good to go. All right, so I just took that horn off, the knob off, and you can see we've cut the threads into it. Um, and I've got pretty even threads all the way around. I probably could even file this down a little bit more, but I think we'll be okay the, the way that we are, especially if you put a little epoxy on it. The key is, it's hard to see probably on the video, but you have a little shoulder here. So if you file that down with a little shoulder, taper down on the end for the right size of the threads, then it'll blend right nice into the horn. Less is more with epoxy, you don't need too much. So we're just gonna put a little bit on. And then we will screw the knob on. Oops. Doesn't hurt as you saw when I was cutting the threads, you go back and forth. That way it helps cut the threads. And you'll see the excess epoxy kind of come out the bottom. We're just gonna wipe that off so that it's nice and smooth. Okay, check our taper. Looks good. This one looks good, they match. So we'll get a view from the front and looks pretty good. So the key thing is to take your time doing it and make sure they blend in. That way the horn knobs, when you do it this way, don't look out of place.